Hello, and welcome back to the Geek on My Sleeve channel. This is, oh, Geek Out 85. We are going to be deep diving on Rapture, book one of Apocalypse Gate by Daniel Chehofen. Uh, best attempt at name there. And yeah, it is a unique twist and thoroughly enjoyable. Yeah, I, uh, of course, we always have fun kind of doing some little pre geek out sessions before we meet up to hang out with you guys on it. And I was a bit anxious, as I always am, when I suggest a title and I, I gave it to Pete to check out. And um, yeah, all in all, it sounds like you enjoyed it. New new take on lit RPG um for those who haven't uh read it listened to it downloaded it into their brain or had their brain uploaded into the system can you give us a quick breakdown of rapture book one so rapture book one if you've read the baba verse series or at least book one into it takes a similar how i got transported into the game approach um, there is a gentleman who died, had his head frozen, the company who was supposed to revive him after, you know, technology advance ended up going bankrupt. They sold him to another company. This other company more or less downloads people's brains. Um, but then they put them into a game like environment and they essentially sell their stream of their gameplay and people can watch it live and it's always on kind of deal um, for funding so that they can get more medical funding and everything else, which is uh, the end goal. Um, but it it's essentially apocalypse, like it says, and it starts off very zombie apocalypse. Um, quite similar to Walking Dead, where the zombie virus is airborne, so to speak, and everybody has it. Um, when you die, no matter what, you come back as a zombie. So it's not like, uh, oh, I can't think of the other zombie movie I'm thinking of, where you get bit, then you turn. So it's not, I guess, blood or infection based. It's uh, alive or dead based. Uh, but it also plays or works very much like kind of an RTS, real-time strategy, where you're, you know, going out, gathering resources, you're building up your base, um, you're finding new people. And yeah, it. I guess it didn't feel as of currently so much RPG-esque that I'm used to um, with more of the focus on the individual character stats and whatnot, but it does well in the theme it's in with it being an apocalypse and upgrading the weapons and the armor and the vehicles and home base and everything else, so... Yeah, it definitely has um, a lot of similar zombie feels from other franchises out there. And I know you said it, but just to reiterate, something that didn't really hit home for me the first time I listened to it was uh, the streaming isn't the primary purpose of it. Supposedly there's some like medical um, bit and his... AI handler Scott, who almost got named Betty and ended up being named Jarvis. I almost said James. Yeah. Jarvis, uh, Iron Man's um, AI butler. He can't reveal the purpose of the game, but our main guy, Al, gets further than anybody else. And or, I want to say he's in like I, I don't 400s. know if that's accurate. I know he got well, further by than the, his original handler. Yes, but at the end, he gets a world first. Oh, okay, okay. So there are other 
I don't want to say humans because pretty much they like similar to in the Bobiverse, they go and they take the brain and they destroy it during the uploading process. Right. So he's now dead, dead. Um, but and yeah. that's where I, I guess, yes, they're trying to do these things for medical, but I felt the bigger was the bigger drive was artificial intelligence because our handler is an AI as well as everybody mm -hmm. who we're interacting with is an AI and it, it doesn't they're, so much they're, feel they're like they're not it. even an AI. They're, they're just NPCs that are um, replicated off of failed uploads. So like the AI is independent uh, okay, where yeah. the, the replicants, the NPCs are copies of other people or coded based off of people's I'm trying to remember because Grand's story when he was talking to her about it before world mode unlocks, excuse me, um, was based off of um, what, somebody who worked there's grandmother or story or ancestor, I guess not even grandmother per se. So we had a question from Anna. Um, so does he have any option to kill himself or his brain? Question mark. Yeah, and that's kind of the whole like very beginning of it. He wakes up in a gray room and he's getting the oh the I can't think of words TLDR. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, the data dump of hey, here you are, have fun, try and survive. Um, and of course he's like, well, I'd like to go on living. So he does. It, yeah, they're pretty much the whole book is him trying not to die. Um, but in the store, he can purchase an extra life. But yeah. it's uh, ridiculously expensive. Yeah, yeah. And real quick for our nice uh, little 30 second intro intermission. We'll be yeah, we're, we're so bad that. about that. Yeah, I, we, we get too excited and jump into it. Um, but yeah, the, he only gets one life. Eventually he'll supposedly be able to buy more. Um, but if he dies in game, he's dead. If he doesn't play for at least eight hours in a 24 hour period, he's dead or he loses a life. And he currently only has one life. Um, which I'm I'm waiting to see if we run into some some reason for that needing to play eight hours out of twenty four later on. Um, part of me wonders if later on in the series that will be um, something that you know maybe maybe he kind of cracks a little bit and gets back see into it. Him having a problem with it because at the beginning it was him doing the little missions and then mm -hmm. coming back to it and he could get, you know, the pillow and all the luxury of life items and could have his own safe haven. Um, right. and I could see if it, if the character was different, I, I could see that being a thing like, yeah. What, what do you think about that? Um, it, yeah. White Thatch, you you are uh, always on it with um with keeping up with us in these series. We really appreciate it. Mmm, sustenance. Um, when yeah, Scott, yeah, well the AI, the, the, is always, uh... yeah, like everybody tries it. You'll be full for a whole twenty four hours. Mmm, give it a shot. Yeah, and, and that's the whole like, yes, it, it yeah gives you sustenance for 24 hours but tastes like cardboard so that's where the whole medical side of things i would guess comes from the you know your body's not going to re require or crave stuff but you also didn't get the happy dopamine dopamine release of um you know food yeah, yeah. and uh a lot of the stories you see them even though they're not alive, 
to kind of help make sure they don't have that mental snap, keeping everything as typical as if they were alive, right? For the replicants. And that would have you know, been like he, the hardest part for me because, you know, it's until it's you get not the hunger the pains of game that I would like to be dropped into, but I would be so <laughs> amped up and excited. You don't, you don't want and, zombies, um, you know, decaying well, and just the, like exploding ending, in your face. The ending has me very excited for the future, but uh, I would, I, this guy takes it pretty easy and even keel and tries to explain it and doesn't overwhelm them mm -hmm. where me, I would be like jumping up and down and be like beep 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 magic and yeah. he plays it off yeah and yeah I would that would be my hardest part is explaining it to people yeah and relating to them yeah but so, I, I think it did really well kind of introducing everything how it starts off with the bat and you know we work through it and then we figure out about durability and then we're doing just a kill quest to get our feet under us and then right, the storyline right. quests come up yeah it's it's one of the hardest parts i think for a lot of stories is to get you past the learning curve of the world um and it sounds like scott the handler has some kind of restrictions over what he well yeah he does have restrictions as he gets himself into different subroutines but um you know, they pretty much get thrown in there, sink or swim from the get go, see if you survive. And if you do survive, then it's worth spending some time um, bringing you up to speed. And as a reader, it's nice because we we want into the action, right? Um, uh, I think it only took us, what, like three chapters before we had our first combat. Yeah, you get in your like combat that. fix. Uh, White Thatch says you can really feel like this is a game in development. Um, I agree with that. It, it reminded me of a handful of games. I know they referenced another game, um, but I wasn't quite sure. I think they said like Nuclear Winter was the one they talked about, but they oh, said yeah, it was like similar of copyright stuff. They yeah it, yeah. yeah. Like it, it reminded me of a handful of different games, like even like XCOM or stuff like that um, a little bit. Um, but that's more turn based. But you had kind of like the the Left for Dead feel plus the RTS feel um, with the the builder. Um, Our nuclear winner equals Fallout. Yeah, uh, see, I haven't been keeping up with my Fallout games. There we go. Good looking out, White Thatch. I have not spent a lot of time with Fallout either. Um, but that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the Fallout titles ever so popular. Um, so what one of our running jokes with main characters are the common tropes that we keep running into. We did um, have it was an old lady instead of an old man. Um, I don't think we technically had a giant spider. We did have giant muted multi-legged things. We had centipedes. That's what it was. Yeah, we had a and giant we had snakes. But oh. our main character wasn't a medical professional. I didn't, okay. Or okay. programmer. We had a um foster kid who killed his abuser. Um, so he did some juvie time, kind of had some yeah. bad luck, and he is a self-admitted sociopath. So, like, he's not your white knight, your, you know, your goody two-shoe. Um, he's very much, um, I don't want to say he's like a quote-unquote bad guy, but he had his period of troubled youth, and then it sounds like before he got his brain frozen after death, he was like working for a security firm or something like that. But he he had some useful skills, the ability to pick locks, um, the Art, ability yeah. to yeah, jump very cars. Much kind of anti-hero. Yeah, yeah, white white thatch. Um, he definitely falls into our anti-hero. And uh yeah, part of me wonders if 
that's going to be a bit of what allows him to survive in this environment more. Um, as we learn kind of like the secrets behind what this medical experiment is. Um, because let's be honest, like as much as everybody thinks they're going to be the cowboy standing up on the hilltop during the zombie apocalypse, um, realistically, most of us are probably going to be zombies. And um, those of us who aren't are going to be having mental breaks and um, become zombie food. So uh, I guess I would deal with a lot of outdoors. Uh, <laughs> he, um, he says you don't but... bunker down. That's a sure way to uh, get um, get eaten. Yeah. So I yeah. but I I really enjoyed the way it when he started doing the story missions. And then after when he opens world mode and they're all mm-hmm. kind of sort of being incorporated and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, wild builds hold out or whatever. Like yes. Bill was probably my favorite character. Yes. Yes. And Mr. then next would Mr. be. Nob. Oh, it's not Mother Teresa. And uh, Graham. Yeah. Graham. Yeah. Yeah. Um. A lot of but indoor that cleaning. says a lot of indoor clearing. Yeah. Clearing. Yeah, that's true. As I go through and um, do some quote unquote house shopping as I start uh, hoarding, hoarding the stuff. Um, yeah. Wild Bill was a lot of fun. Um, even when we first meet him, right. Having his uh, nightgown or whatever, flapping in the wind everything um yeah yeah and then so it primarily focused on upgrading weapons which was you know i very necessary for Mm -hmm. just progression of story and that way you have didn't have to keep looting and that way you could address stuff um as well as like by the middle of the book when we're getting um the rabbit dogs and oh i forget what it was that had the hardened shell and it took it was too hard for it to punch through the armor i think that was the centipede right or was Uh, it a scorpion i think it was a centipede um our buddy white thatch had a question did you get the feeling that the devs messed with bill between the first and second meeting so the first meeting was when he was in story mode and he had to go into the hospital where we get to meet our two parties. Um, and for... then Bill helps him fight off. And then the second meeting was after he gets into open world mode. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll let you take a crack at that. I know how so they explained for me, it off. I felt like not necessarily if you've read any of Dakota Kraut's um, Completionist Chronicles series, it, Dakota Kraut does a really good job based off of your character's stats is how you can interact with the world or the world interacts with you, and we get to see that. And that was really the feel where uh, most of the people he interacts with throughout the story um their first meeting they still feel as if it's normal but i i felt like bill was himself because in the first meeting he was pretty much like i've got to protect my daughter which you know fit and hey if you're gonna help me achieve my goal i'm gonna protect her and then as we were going on um he met him again and he's like there's no way you're here there's no way so it's still very much the real world feel um but then due to the game mechanics coming out and the updates and everything else i i felt like it was a combination of our main guy's stats his personability or whatever being below a three or whatnot yeah Um, the stats as well as him still you know feeling as if it's uh, an apocalypse but not a video game yeah that's that's how they explained it off um I think White Thatch might be onto something though, because we do see that the devs are kind of tinkering with some different things, right? There were some positive tweaks in the game, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do some other little tweaks along the way. 
um, especially to meet their own motives. Uh, we're only in book one, and I had it pulled up a moment ago, but I think there's like I seven, like seven in the series. Yeah. Um, yeah, seven is the last one nice. out. Nice. Nice. Um, so the, the book was, is targeted for a mature audience, but kind of like where we talked about it, I felt like with Dungeon Lord as well, it really, um, makes it feel a little bit more authentic, right? I think most people, when they get thrown into a zombie infested area, will be dropping F-bombs left and right as they scramble um uh, yeah that that's where i i would agree the characters felt a little bit more authentic dang it white thatch you said he's already finished the series normally uh, i'd be right there with you where i'd marathon them but i enjoy speculation and so i've got to stop myself and right not go right. too far that way i keep it inside of it yeah um, let us know uh what you think of the series white thatch is it worth us uh keep working into our, our geek out um, schedule. It'll probably take us a while to, to sneak in the next six books, um, especially with, gosh, I've lost track of how many ongoing series we have going right now. We still yeah. haven't come back to my Dune series. We stopped right before my favorite book well, in the Dune series. And then we haven't gone back through the Lamb uh, series. So you know, I'm we just need to be even. doing book streams five days a week. I think that's how, how we need to get this going. Um, um, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, definitely for a mature audience, but I feel it authenticates it for the apocalypse as well as where our main character come from, as well mm -hmm. as, you know, our rough redneck with his, you know, beautiful daughter and, you know, other the, the characters feel good. I, I truly enjoy the characters. I enjoy the way it progresses and it adds up as well as like we're slowly figuring things out and we continue to go to town and try to get rid of the zombies and try to clear it out and we're doing all this. And then like once it gets a bit of a hold on it, now we're going off to set up our next base or our next town. And, you know, we got souped up before we rolled out. And, yeah. So, White Thatch. Um, definitely pick it up, but big but. The nec next books are way more mature, i.e. graphic BDSM. So... We'll, we'll have to make a judgment call there. We try to keep these PG-13. Um, but, yeah, I'm not opposed to, uh, to be honest, like, unlike it's one of the things that I enjoy in the books, speaking of the land sidestep, I enjoy yeah, how, like, serious and, like, this is the path you have chosen. This is, you know, your legacy, serious it gets. And then I'm, I'm it ties to see in the, the comic relief, thoughts. where this book, it's always serious. You could die at any moment. You could be sideswiped by a deer that, you know, completely goes through your leg. And, you know, now you've got this giant buck with steel type antlers mauling you. And then it's not comic relief, but it's definitely relief and changes up the storyline. Um, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, I I would yeah definitely yeah more more of a mature audience. Um, mm -hmm. looking at our demographics on YouTube, we hit the twenty to thirty male range, so I think it will fit our current audience. Um, yeah, if you are offended, uh, skip that one come back for our other ones we cover a lot of stuff than most are it's, family friendly yeah i was about to say um pete really likes to stay in the lit rpg genre we get him to branch out every now and then but um i enjoy going through a wide variety of different genres and now that um 
Audible has added all these additional books included, I find myself entering into genres that I never would have anticipated that I'd venture into. Um, and Peter's even called me out. I was like, hey, you wasting credits on this stuff? It's like, no, 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 they're free. It's okay. We're saving the credits for the lit RPG, Peter, I promise. Okay. Um, we now have probably a couple hundred different lit RPG books and not enough geek out sessions in the year. Um, um, yeah, we had two like massive back to back book hauls where we picked up like 40 the first time and then we capped out our car at 50. And then we picked up, a, yeah, I think we, yeah. We'd... We we found out that there was a limit on Audible shopping cart. Never would have guessed. Never would have as guessed. W- as well as the limit is a lie because you can't That's complete true. it at the limit. So you need to go That's below true. the limit. Anyway, back yes. to. Please, please continue to support our addiction of buying and listening and talking to people about Audible, Audible books, audio books. Um. People got tired of dealing with us in real life as we're like, hey, that reminds me of a book. Hey, you know what? I, there's a book you'd like. Hey, yeah, so now yeah. we're here and you guys are opting into us saying, hey, you want to hear about this book I just read? Apocalypse Gate Rapture. Well, this guy dies and his brain gets sold at auction. And... um You know, now he's thrown into a zombie apocalypse game where we have all this different failed uploads of other people who were, you know, uploaded into this game. And we get our snarky AI who we almost named Betty. And um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that that character. Anna asks family friendly BDSM review. Um, challenge accepted. Challenge hey, accepted. I mean, I could review. Talk those about books. transferable skills. Uh, not tying is not only good for Boy Scouts. Um, find out more on a future episode of Geek on My Sleeve. So, um, yeah. Sorry, where were we going with that? I believe we were going with the progression system and how yes. it seems. You know, like my hero and then it's like make me yours i will say anyway so i'm enjoying the (laughs) town progression um the thing that got me most excited about this series believe it or not was the ending when it's like is that a dragon and it was bigger (laughs) than a jumbo jet or whatever or commercial plane or whatever had a bunch of little mm-hmm. baby ones around it mm-hmm. um and the creatures mutating because like i expected it from when i was reading through at the beginning to be more traditional like okay you got the walkers and then you got the runners and you got the screechers and the bloaters and stick primarily zombie theme and i it's been done and i'm not a huge fan so to speak um but i definitely was excited about some of the animal mutations as well as we get that moment where he's like oh don't let the rabid you know the giant dog-sized squirrel you know snatch someone up so we got to be more cautious inside the wall and then the irony and the silliness of uh our bomb making chemist guy taking a hammer and you know tinking on (laughs) on the wall and how overly complicatedly simplistic it is. Yeah. Yeah. I I really enjoyed the foreshadowing on just like the upgrades and the other abilities there. Um, here, here's something for you. Um, unlike white thatch, we haven't finished the series, but um, they're clearly preparing people for something. Right, like the the replicants, we'll just use that term, even though it's a Bobverse term, and we don't use that here. Um, our uploads, it's clearly getting prepared for something, right? What if this environment is to help kind of guide them towards what the real world is currently like? Because we don't know what time frame it is. 
we just know that this is taking place the game around the millennium um they imply okay, that things so are based off of ancestors but what things if, in a situation see what they come up with yeah or what if like uh the real world quote unquote is kind of apocalyptic and they're trying to assimilate or test how to get like replicants or people to deal with the current environments because uh, there's a translator piece. So we know we're going to be dealing with something that's potentially not human. Or so, the thing that got me excited too is it's uh, open world mode, right? Mm -hmm. Where, yeah. So we're going to run into other replicants or other uh well downloaded brain people maybe well because when he's talking about his first handler and how he died on his first story mode and then he's like oh yeah blah -de blah is the furthest one and then he's like just kidding i can't say that you know 404 not found error type deal um, right right so i i assume oh, others are in there white thatch you know how to tease us what if this is the beta for VGO? Bum, bum, hey. bum, 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 bum. It's not, but I, it would be well, pretty cool. I, my biggest thing is guns. He just wants us to catch up thing. on VGO and Arturian. So, it, and VGO, yeah, guns terrible. aren't a thing yet at the current place we're Plus, at. Like, I mean, our, our some boy... Some of the mutations aren't really, like, over the top. They they feel very traditional, like treants mm -hmm. and giant spiders, not freaky armored mutated spiders. We're right there with I, you, I White do like crossovers, We enjoy yeah. some crossovers. That's part of the reason why we enjoy uh, Bringing Gate yeah, yeah. online so much. Um, the fact that he's letting so many other people play in his space and Dakota's doing the same, not quite crossover, but we we're getting more collabs in the genre and it makes us so, so very happy. So very happy. So, um, yeah, back on point, the progression of the game, they do it well. They do a couple quick, quick modes for him to kind of figure out if he's going to live or die how to use his magical fanny pack, um, get into a couple story modes where he gets to meet characters later on that he'll be interacting with. And then we get to open world mode, uh, I want to say pretty early on, like by the end of the first third of the book, we're in world mode. Does that sound yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, which it, it all makes sense. It was all just brief, you know, intro. Yeah. And we go full fledge and uh wild bills hold out 10 foot tall cinder block walls um and then at the beginning but we've already the upgraded beginning. them before lunch on this one is one true one. this is true um yeah yeah i'm oh. also excited for like the potential spells because in the epilogue after the fact and when it's listing off all the stats it says he has zero spells and uh yeah i i understand why with this with the environment and the story he went with the progression path and tree he went with as well as he's put people into positions of power to help themselves as well as granny you know was like oh he's trying to do this for us you know, let's help him out. And then mm -hmm. there was a way to transfer the XP. Which yeah. was uh, well, conveniently snazzy. He he pretty much spent all his XP upgrading everyone else, right? Like he... Yeah, yeah, up until this point where... 20 plus the, the weapons and... Bills. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Yeah. But the spells, I'm I'm very curious the spells because we we definitely see real. Nah, I don't want to say real world. I want to say consequences of events. Like when he's carrying the woman in one of the earlier story <laughs> missions, and he did, ends up. Did you catch back. that? Was that was that the Scooby Doo gang that he ran into there? 
Velma. Um, no, they said the other character, Daphne or whatever. Um, it or wasn't we saved Fred, that Penny. but uh, maybe. Penny, Penny and Velma. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure because like they were talking about it being um, some. Oh, it sounded like a Scooby Doo scene. Maybe maybe I was projecting on it. Um, those watching this on the replay, let us know if you caught that in the comments below. Um, if if we ran into Scooby and the gang without Scooby and, and Shaggy, um, because Fred, the heroic guy, stayed back, and then Velma, and then Penny, who could have been Daff, Daffy, Daphne. Anyway, anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we had... Um, Couple other fun Easter eggs in there what was a Mortal Kombat that does I, round yeah, two they did fight that a couple times. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm curious to see how the magic system develops. Uh, just because need more magic, um, but there's potential there, and you know the toll it's going to take on his body. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he he pretty much at the end of it he's got his main home base that he's leaving set up where they have people in positions to do stuff they're mm -hmm. you know getting everything taken care of they've got a game plan going forward um as well as uh, they're not safe and it really drives home like the world is progressing you need to progress with it you can't be idle um mm -hmm. we run into a problem you know getting through uh, trying to kill stuff and yeah it's it's a weirdly beautifully unique way of doing it because typically when i think of lit rpgs i think of mmos where you've got like zones and you got the beginning zone and then you know we go all ash ketchum pokemon where we've got to travel to the next zone and then there's harder people and next zone and harder people but for this it's more dbz oriented where i was I'm waiting for sure we've lived in the same town this whole time but we slowly progress and we're doing nothing and all of a sudden you know the cosmic universe is saying hey there's an opposite and equal reaction to everything you brought back goku the good guy well we're gonna throw a bad guy at you anyway it's i i'm enjoying the progression yeah really leads what, to the nowhere is safe was something that i thought was pretty interesting um i want to get your take on it like a lot of times in these type of situations like the npcs or like people who are part of the system can't like see it you know what i mean like they're they're self-aware but they can't uh, I'm trying to think of examples like in. Um... I think the per, the progression was pretty good because it went from acting as if they're everyday Joes to our main guy showing up, them realizing it's the apocalypse. Um, the title's very apt for the rapture, which I heard about from the Left Behind series, which I never read, but Carl kept trying to get me to read. But it makes sense in that regards. And we get that whole priest scene anyway. Mm -hmm. And then they they progress by slotting into their roles like Bill's daughter is to take care of the homestead, you know, Bill's mm -hmm. to keep everybody in line. And yeah, yeah, yeah. where where I was going in that Sorry. is like even at the very end and um one of the many reasons why I thought you'd enjoy this book is, you know, your ability to remember names, but like Gothi points out, um, because we know that things with technology don't work. Right. But we conveniently have this old pump system that they can use to fill up all the vehicles. And even she is, she comes up with it. It's not like Al points her to it. She's the one that says, Hey, doesn't oh, okay. this seem yeah. weird? 
Like, doesn't this just seem like My faulty game, game logic Man, and everything? Yes. And for me, like that was kind of like, it's not really like we're breaking fourth wall, but at the same time, most I, of the time, I like I took when, it more as a life reset Tika kind of moment where yeah. because you're interacting with the main character, uh, you're progressing. Uh, um, uh, I'm looking forward to getting to book six there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just real quick. And um, I, I guess she did it in other situations as well, where when she was looking through the shop and she's like, most of this is just junk to, you know, swindle the, oh, easily swindled people. Can't think of words. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I think they they did well and it needs to be that way because he's leaving and they're yeah that, that's very that's very true um i i like the fact that we got jarvis upgraded so like he's leaving but he won't be out of touch and eventually yep. he'll be able to get jarvis into um his car even so as long as he's able to get a hologram there or i thought the, he did. did he already upgrade it to the car he got it into the or maybe Wild it wasn't Bill's into base. the car it was the whole scene where he leaves the base and then he uh ends up popping up and he's like oh are you in both places but then they did get the souped up upgrade for him to uh fully unlock the store yes, for the people the merchants back at upgrade Wild or whatever Builds hold out yeah yep 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 yeah i'm i'm really excited about the potential i think we only have book one right now um mm -hmm. have the others in our oh wait did we I think we might have picked up book two on one of our sales I don't know. You know, when, I, when you get to over 700 I'm, audiobooks, I'm it's hard to track the them all. Yeah. 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 Um, definitely a lot of fun. Probably going to work the other ones into our geek outs. We've, we've managed to keep this pretty, pretty PG, PG 13, even though the books, um, definitely a mature one. Um, so we could probably cover the other ones and just skip more of the, the I, intimate scenes right yeah yeah i mean yes we can i feel it's very much like combat where there are authors who can write a scene and it's not as play by play and mm -hmm. then there's you know a send online book four where you can be having the dance of death with your opponent as you're getting the play by play and the witty banter and the deepening of the plot all in the middle of this fight scene so it's it's definitely a added element and I, I am a little disappointed we had the isn't this a little too monster cliche when we first get or well our second meeting with uh, uh, Dobby, uh, that something didn't pop up that we didn't have a world you're a beep moment uh, um, achievement okay. unlocked yeah. Um, yeah 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 interesting uh white thatch says i like how it plays out that the npcs think it's the real world quote and then are told it's just a simulation yeah that's that's kind of what i was um getting on earlier in the book um and a lot of other games like when the npcs are confronted with that type of stuff they just kind of like gloss over or don't quite process yeah, yeah, it because we, it breaks it like if you think of a send on long yeah mm -hmm. they if they're mentioning something that's outside of the game they mm -hmm. just like put on a filter and can't hear what you're saying but yeah I felt like that added a level of you forget you're in a game because sometimes it started them off as everyday joes and then you know the big like hey this is so much more was 
primarily with the gun with the unlimited reload aspect mm -hmm. as well as then he goes mm -hmm. back to Gothi's father and with the um med pack and the healing and you, you get to surely slowly 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 develop um different ways of introducing it and them coming to terms yeah yeah um yeah would you recommend this book to others if they're okay with uh so blood, sex and gore i would recommend it it's not typically my flavor of book um i assume there's going to be quite a bit of more unique elements that i like elsewhere Here, it feels very rts or real-time strategy you build mm -hmm. up your base you go do these other things the it's a unique take on the apocalypse and the zombie aspect um it does have the relief not comic relief but i thoroughly enjoyed it it would be one that i probably shouldn't blare out of my speakers at walmart going through the store but no, it's, uh, it's walmart uh, oh, yeah yeah that was their copyright yeah thing there. yeah yeah uh white thatch says there's a fast forward button who are we kidding pete most people can't catch it at two to three x speed anyway like when i play it on speaker mode um people think i'm listening to a foreign language or something where they're just like you know like what yeah what, but what are you listening scenes, to they they enunciate very well <laughs> They as well slow as it down for everyone to hear. Yeah, it. Nah, I that's I that's how I feel when I like switch it to one X to listen with somebody else. I'm like, can, can we at least do like one and a half, one and a quarter? It's like I get triggered now, when there isn't a speed control. For yeah, yeah, uh, I'm at the point where I I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm trying to remember. Like there's Facebook, I don't think you can adjust the speed. And there's a couple other major platforms where you're stuck in a one X world. Um anyway. Anyway. Oh yeah. Um, I, it's not for everyone. I wouldn't consider it family friendly. There's graphic content for exploding heads and puking all over the place, as well as the sexual themes. Um but for me, it adds to the character development because they're yeah, kind of star-crossed lovers, so to speak, where they come from a similar place and they bond over it. And that's where a lot of relationships, you know, flourishes, similar interests or similar, I, I guess, character development plots. Yeah. As well as it's not just that because, you know, we get the overprotective father and, you know, it only took the apocalypse for him to let his little girl, you know, grow up as well as granny who's like, what, 87 now being like, yeah, you know, people want some comfort. I think mm -hmm. just about everybody, wink, wink, wants some. <laughs> Who, who's going to comfort granny? Um, I, I don't think we've found that person yet. I don't know. After that, that the two buses show up with Ralph, our biker dude. Um, we we had quite a, quite a club in there. It's uh, yeah, it's turning into one big happy um, tribe slash family. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. It, um, I, um, uh, White Thatch said, I get feelings of the stand in this series, also. Um, I don't think I know the stand, yeah. I don't think I know what you're talking about there, White Thatch. Um, please, please let us know a bit more about that. Um, I picked this up because I was kind of curious, um, about it it was recommended as a more adult themed lit rpg series so uh well, stephen man, I've king not, i've not read any stephen king i know we, I we know need to spend more time it's 
and that people love him and he is a shoot from the hip kind of author. Okay. From other okay. author interviews of their inspiration. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. He he's a powerhouse <laughs> when it comes to publishing. Um but yeah, a lot of fun. Um definitely interested in book two, especially after White Thatch gives gave us a bit of teaser there. Um but yeah, so we're we're going to keep with our twice a week geek outs. It's July 4th. If we haven't said it already, happy 4th of July to all of our friends. I know I tossed it in chat. Um, really appreciate you guys making time to hang out with us live before you go out and hopefully have a safe, more ways than one, um, holidays. I know a lot of places are actually holding get-togethers locally now that the vaccination rate is up. Um, social distancing restrictions are getting lifted. So before you go crowd into tiny spaces with your uh, love, lo loved ones and complete strangers to watch things go boom in the sky. What do we got going on uh, this Thursday, Pete? This Thursday, Berserker uh, by... Oh, I'm going to butcher that name. Demetrio Gergeris. I don't know. I'm I'm so sorry. Um, I'm uh, just so... saying, like, that is an awesome last name with the amount of G's and K's there. Um, it's yes. all G-K-I. Yes, yes. And so this Berserker is another lit RPG series. Um, we covered the Life in Exile series, a.k.a. Um, oh, wow. Brain fart. A.k.a. Watchers series. Um, then this one was recommended. And yeah, so this one is very unique in the aspect of it, it takes more of a multiverse or parallel or we all live in a yellow submarine approach. Um, yes. the, the you, you can only are... see the water outside if you've been splashed. Otherwise, yeah. you're just inside the submarine. So if you want to see the other fishies and their epic, awesome powers, you need to get a little wet. Yeah, and this one is unique just for the way they transition and the overlap and the complexity. Um, I, the other very unique elements are the Corgi. And essentially, the main character has a dog. And let's, let's just say the dog becomes our sidekick in more ways than one. And there's so mm -hmm. much development as well as the way he set this up. There is so much potential for more. And yes. there is so much, uh, yeah, so, so much potential for more that my only. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it's, it's a good book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Lit RPG. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to say about this book? It's it's a lot of fun. It's definitely a different take on RPG than um, or lit RPGs than we've seen in the past with it being like an urban lit RPG with like mm -hmm. the worlds overlapping. Um, there's some periods where um yeah, I, I don't want to get too much into spoilers. Like, I, I really enjoy um, the dog, and I, I want to continue it to see more because we just kind of get, like, a taste of the potential um, yeah. of our he, Berserker. He does, he does it very um, uniquely where we get to see... It's kind of like a, my favorite phrase. It's backwardsly forwards. I mm -hmm. typically am not a fan of beginning with the end, where mm -hmm. you're in the middle of an epic scene or something's going down and then it's like well hold on let me tell you how i got here but right, he does it very right. well in the aspect that he does like snapshots or snippets 
and mm -hmm. it's kind of kind of connected where he's going through a moment and initially the character doesn't seem much like a berserker but then as things progress and you see more development you can totally see why he is a berserker um yes karen mentions i think the dog is smarter than the guy and uh you know, he does have I, I, a higher I think, intelligence. Stat. I was about to say, I was about to say just that. Um, well played, well played. Um, yeah, yeah. And the white thatch says, so Karen is more like real life. Yep, yep. The dogs, dogs know what's up. Um, and then next Sunday, what do we have, Pete? Next Sunday, we're Here finally you go, like getting around to, I'm sorry, Axiom, which is book one in the um, Arturian Victorian. Archive series. It is Dakota Kraut and Dennis Vanderkirken. Um, yeah, yes. so we are Dakota Kraut and Divine Dungeon diehards we took a break mm -hmm. from it because that was all we were doing at the I time i think there's a point where it was literally there, like a third of our streams was dakota car dedicated there um, is a lot of hype and excitement and i've tried not to be poisoned by the internet that there is additional developmental stuff that goes on throughout the series mm -hmm. my understanding is like anything, it can be perceived and utilized as a standalone. If mm -hmm. you want, it's not exactly crossover material, but Dakota Kraut is by far my favorite author in regards to Easter eggs, where mm -hmm. he will add elements of something else, and it's uniquely awesome. And yeah, he is definitely one for Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, so I guess a, a little bit about the book. So this follows a, th this is essentially Grandpa's redemption story. Um, yeah, yeah, he, <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's based in the Divine Dungeon universe. It happens mm -hmm. before our main uh, Divine Dungeon series and this character ends up showing up later in our series so it's kind of cool to see origins yeah yeah our favorite um sunshine and love pillow mage that we meet in book three of the divine dungeon series finally going to go back finally check it out um we have cheated i think we're up to book three at this point and we picked up the rest of the series uh, this last sale, so we fully intend to go all the way through it. Um, quick, shameless plug, the Mountaindale Press, the guys that put out um, the whole Divine Dungeon series, Dakota Crowds Publishing Company, have a super awesome Discord channel that we've included in the links for all of our chats. Um yeah, definitely hang out with us in our Discord channel, but we've been doing the bulk of our Divine Dungeon talk over there with those guys, and they actually have all the authors and they're in chat. Um, Dennis Vanderkirken is freaking on fire, always uh, chatting in there about the our different books. By so, Floof, F L O O F, I believe. Yeah, Terror Floof. Um, a lot of fun chilling with those guys. And then uh, as I was just talking to um, a buddy of ours, we're actually doing a third stream that week. Need to confirm details with Pete and Chaz. Um, oh, is this uh, Baba Verse 3? Yeah, yeah. Very much similar to the book we just talked about. Um, Bobiverse book three. We're going to be hanging out with him on his channel next week, the 10th, assuming we can coordinate a time. So just watch our socials for that or check out our discord. We'll make sure to plug it in there. But if you don't have Saturday plans, um, you guys have three opportunities to chill with us and talk about books. So yeah, yeah. 
We are pumped, excited, appreciate you guys making time to chill with us. We hope you all have a lovely 4th of July to our North American friends who celebrate. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some fireworks potentially, but, uh, maybe I'm just becoming, um, more like, uh, Arturian, our, our pillow sunshine mage where, um, I'm kind of looking forward to next week when everybody no longer has fireworks to shoot off in the streets at like 10, 11 o'clock at night when I'm actually trying to be a responsible individual. Yeah, um, my dogs don't care for it. Yeah, your dogs don't care for much of anything. Um, somebody could pass air in the middle of the room and they'll freak out. Um, yeah, thank you, White Thatch. The dog itself. Uh, <laughs> yep. Thank you, White Thatch. Uh, Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Anna. Karen. All those who made time to hang out and contribute in chat. I we think appreciate we, we all of up you our guys. timing for Carlos. I think that's who we're missing. Uh, it's Plus all he's, good. He's just lurking. It's all good. Um, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate those who watch us in um, the archive section after we're no longer live. Share the love in the comments below and catch us on Discord in the comments below. Bye. Bye.